starts. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it, might, it may already start. Sometimes my computer is really slow. I'm, I'm Jason. Jason, you know, so I'm going to do a demo of um, some oil painting stuff just because I haven't done it in a while. A lot of people have said, wow, you paint and do stuff, and I should really kind of show you more about that stuff. I just really don't. Uh, haven't done much lately. This is kind of my wife's office, which I use as a temporary painting studio when I get out my paints, which is why I don't get it off very often because I feel guilty about hogging one of her her office space. Um, so in the background, you got that. Uh, our, I'm like waving it like it's nothing, but it's actually like all, all the like memories and stuff. Um, so if you see like that clipboard, that's what that is. In the background, you'll see um, welcome to my wife's paintings too, and then I've got my reference photo. I'm gonna be working on this kind of oil sketch I've been doing for a long time. Um, uh, obviously, it's Lucy Lou from a, a publicity shot from Kill Bill Volume One. Um, try and kill the glare because I got a lot of glare coming from the window. I want to make sure it's well lit because when it's not well lit, the colors don't look right, and then it looks like garbage. Um, I'm gonna try and get the blending of the hand done right because it's kind of blurry. And I, I can see the reference picture I kind of hung up back there uh, beyond the hallway. And you can kind of see one of my other paintings up on the wall, can't you? Let me see. Hold on. No, it's some of those the door. We can go over some of the color mixing theories. I didn't come up with this stuff. A lot of this stuff was come I came up with from reading a book. Um, I, well, I, I learned. From, I didn't come up with it. I learned from reading a book. It was called um, Yellow and Blue Don't Make Green, and it was a great book. Let me turn on the light. See if I can get some different lighting in here. Maybe I can get a better lit. Uh, that's somewhat better lit. Um, anyway. Because um, I got a lot of light coming in from the window, so it's making me look really blown out. Um, let me try adjusting it a little bit. Uh, it just makes it look more yellow. The painting looks right. I look kind of bluish. But anyway, um, the um, it, it's a book that's now out of print. It's called Yellow and Blue Don't Make Green. And I got my oil paints out so I can kind of demonstrate. I, I, I didn't clean a lot of my stuff, a lot of my brushes. I mean, this is my palette. It's no paint a glass covered with like some kind of white contact paper stuff. You can see it's kind of like whatever you use for like shelf lining, just so I've got a white surface on this side. And then black masking tape, duct tape actually, with like duct tape to keep the edges from being sharp. And it's old. I've had it since I don't know when. But I mean, I just took an old paint of glass, put, put a white surface in the back, so I got something to mix with. I mean, this is not a professional palette, but it does the job. I'm going to see if I can tip down the, the thing so I can kind of show you without getting my paint my uh without getting my my uh computer all covered in paint. Now all this being said, I'm gonna get my colors out. I've got a whole bunch of oil paints. I, I don't know if you can see them. Let me kind of shift so I can kind of show you the oil paints. It's literally I mean I'm literally an office chair with a snack table as my tab array, whatever they call those things. I screwed it over you can see. I've got a wide range of colors, and this is just to save some time of color mixing, because in all honesty, I really don't need this many colors, but sometimes it's nice to have them on hand. Um, I'm really just trying to focus on getting the colors out that I know I'm going to use for today's demo, which is that, that, this, this, that, and that. Good. So these are the main colors I'm going to use for the demo. And my palette knife, where did that go to? See, I, I tried setting this, setting this stuff up in air quotes before I got started, but it seems like I apparently have misplaced a few things when I did that. No, here's my pop. I'm sitting back here. Okay, now basically the way we're taught color theory is very simple. I mean, we taught, we learned this in grade school, and that's red and red and blue make purple, uh, red and yellow make orange, and then wrong one. And then red and uh, yellow and blue make green. That's the way we're all taught and raised and that works. You know, you, you put together colors but then you grow up and you realize you need a different kind of green. You need a different kind of blue and it's like why is this not working? I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of a lid. This is a Lizarin Crimson by the way. I don't know if you can see the palette. You probably can't. Let me see if I can tip this down a little bit more. There we go. My big old white sock feet. Turn it this way so you can kind of see what I squeezed out already. And lemon yellow hue. These are all Windsor Newton paints that I had when I, since I was in uh, since I was in painting school. And, I, and the reason I didn't do all this stuff beforehand because I want to kind of show you what happens when you don't clean up your stuff. 
I know it sounds like a lazy excuse, but it's kind of the truth. I was kind of like, yeah, I'm doing this stuff live. You can kind of show, hey, look, this is how I clean stuff up after years, well, almost a year not using it. There's like a little ring of paint on there. I don't know if you see me. I'm kind of taking the edge of the palette knife, not the tip because that can break. I'm taking it back by the shaft, and I'm scraping off some of the paint. See, I'm going to loosen up the, the tube a little bit. Get this all kind of removed. See if I can get this tube loose. Again, I'm doing this all for the sake of saying, hey, look, you know, this is how I fix a problem. So I could have had all the paints all in nice little new tubes and squeezed out. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Life's not always easy, and I didn't want to make it look easy. So I made it look hard because it is hard sometimes. And since so I'm just scraping away the loose paint, see if I can get it. So you don't want to split the tube, because if you split the tube, it, you've lost the tube. And I've actually got some paint brushes that apparently I left some paint residue in that now are kind of like in the recovery mode right now. They're kind of in the brush ER in a sense. All right, there we go. All right, this is not going to open up for me. Sometimes it'll leach oil, which will really seal it up good and tight. This is the one I probably should open up first because this is the one that's going to be the kind of the make or break with this demo here. It all hinges on lemon yellow hue. <laughs> all right. If I can't get this one, I'll skip ahead and show you something else and work on this in a little bit. One thing I can do too is if my brush is going to let me do it. Ew. And then it's gently massaging in. Like I take a little bit of turpentine and kind of like use the turpentine to wipe, to melt away the paint that's holding it closed. Again, I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but this is one way that works pretty well. I miss the smell of turpentine. <laughs> By the way, I don't use odorless thinner. A friend of mine recommend, recommended me not to use odorless thinner. I was like, why would you not want to use odorless thinner? And he brought up a point. The smell isn't what hurts you. It's the chemicals that come in with the smell. When you have odorless thinner, you don't know where it is, and you're still bringing, breathing in the chemicals. And it's kind of hard to argue with that logic. I'd rather know where it is and where it isn't. For example, natural gas has no scent, smell, as an example. Um, that doesn't mean natural gas isn't harmful. It is, but they put the smell of eggs in it on purpose, so they can tell what you can. They can tell you where it is and where it isn't. Natural gas itself is actually odorless, but I thought it was brilliant when you think about it. <laughs> My phone went off as a message, and then something jumped in the house at the same time. It kind of made me do it for a start. Like, why is somebody messaging me, and why is my phone going off? Because my phone never goes off. There's a lot of buildup on this thing, too. Yeah, it's all beneath this part of things here. Yeah, I might just go ahead and skip ahead to a different color. I'm not going to use lemon yellow in my... In my well, I mean, I will eventually use, use lemon yellow in this demo, but um, I don't want to split the tube is the problem. If I split the tube, I ruin it. Well, anyway, this is something I'll have to work on another time. Um, it's taking longer than I hoped it would. And let me just switch to cadmium yellow Q, although this one might be pretty well boggled up too. Let me see if this one will open up for me. Okay, it's not opening up, but that's okay. I'll worry about again, I'll worry about this one another time. This one will open. Yeah, this one's brand new. And there you go. Say Kevin Yellow Q. Yeah, this will work for the demo. This will work. And 
ultramarine blue. So we're going to... I don't know opening well. <laughs> there we go. All right, ultramarine blue. A lot of oil leached out of these. Um, all right now, there we go. Excuse me to paint more often. Anyway. All right, let me take some of this oil here. This is like the oil of the blue that leached out. Because it'll separate. There's no way to mix it. Let me see if I can put this up here more. There you go. Now you can kind of see it better. All right. Take some of that and see if we can massage that into this part. I'd soak it, but I'm afraid that the, the, the lids aren't airtight, and I'd wind up contaminating the paint with turpentine. I definitely don't want to do that. Anyway, I have my uh, my palette knife. Now, here we got classic red, classic blue, classic yellow, and these are crayon colors almost. So let's just take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. This should make a nice orange, right? And we're kind of getting this kind of... I don't know. It's kind of an orange color. It, it'll. I mean, it would work. It's kind of a nice orange, sort of. You know, that that would be okay. But it looks kind of burnt orange. You know, it's kind of like not very bright. Well, let's take the yellow and the green. Okay, I mean, the yellow and the blue make green. There's blue. I'm squeezing nearly enough yellow out, but that's okay. And it's kind of making a green. It's kind of making a green. Not a really good one. And let's mix a purple. So lizard and crimson, a little ultramarine blue. Now that's a nice looking purple. Yeah, that's a nice, solid, rich purple. So we got a nice range of colors, but the green's kind of really sickly looking. Not as bright as I'd hoped it would be. The purple rocks out pretty good. And the orange isn't so bad. But why did the green fail? The green's, like, absolutely wrong in every way. I mean, it's like a greenish brown. I mean, if I wanted a rich, happy brown, you know, I mean, green, it would be kind of really, like, I don't know, it wouldn't be right. Um, it's just, you know, if I wanted to do like a grass green, like a bright spring green, that's not really going to cut it. I mean, it's not bad, it's just really kind of blah. I mean, I don't know if you can see it really well, but there you go. Those are the colors. So what happened? Why did I all of a sudden have like this marvelous colors and then other ones failed? Well, according to color theory, when you add two colors, it makes a new wavelength. But yellow and blue don't make green brought the great point. The blue is absorbing every color but that blue and reflecting it back. That yellow is absorbing every color but yellow and then reflecting it back. So technically, when you mix yellow and blue, shouldn't they absorb each other's color? The yellow would absorb the blue light and reflect only the yellow, and the yellow would absorb the the blue would absorb the yellow light and reflect only back the blue. But basically, they cancel each other out. So shouldn't it just be black? Because two colors mixing together should be black because they'd absorb every wavelength. The yellow reflecting everything but that yellow and the blue reflecting everything but that blue. Thus canceling each other out. That's wrong. And that's why it took me reading this book to understand. This yellow doesn't reflect that shade of yellow only. It reflects yellow and certain other colors on a very low level. The blue is the same. The red is the same. Every color usually has its own color and other trace elements of other colors in there as well. Because these pigments aren't purely just that color. What is happening is you're unlocking the potential behind it by mixing the two. This blue, this has to do with subtractive versus additive colors. Think about it. Additive color is light, red, green, and blue. Now, what do they teach us in, in grade school is the primary colors for mixing, red, yellow, and blue. Why is it red, yellow, and blue in light, but yellow, red, yellow, green in 
some additive color, the light. You know, why is I'm sorry, I misspoke. I mean, why is it red, yellow, and blue in additive colors? Well, that's not quite correct. It's not supposed to be red, yellow, and blue for for subtractive mixing colors. In fact, it should be magenta, yellow, and cyan, which, if you know your stuff, is the printer colors. Um, and what what happens when you mix red, yellow, and blue? I mean, sorry, red, green, and red, green, and blue, the additive colors, the colors of light. Well, when you mix red and green, you get yellow. When you mix blue and red, you get magenta. You mix blue and green, you get cyan. Sounds familiar? <laughs> I think it's interesting that the secondary colors of light are the primary colors of printing. And the secondary colors in printing are the primary colors of light. They work in reverse directions. One works by reflecting light. One works by putting out light. And that's why things get backwards, because our primary colors should actually be cyan, yellow, and magenta, and even those don't produce every possible color. If you've seen your color gamuts, color gamuts are what's possible given the existing elements. With CMYK printing, the gamut is much smaller than RGB colors, because it's subtractive. There's, there's less that you have available. Um, so what happens is you have less colors possible with three with four printer colors, mind you, CMYK, cyan, yellow, magenta, black, than you do with RGB monitors. So you can get a much more vibrant color out of a monitor. Now, if you add more to the gamut, if you add more colors, more than just CMYK, if you add other colors, that would make brighter colors possible. And in fact, if you used only like four or five more inks, you could actually produce more colors than a monitor could show. White light has more possibilities than a monitor can show, but most monitors have a wide, wide enough range that we don't notice the differences. In other words, the monitors produce most of what white light can see, and printing colors produces almost all that the monitors can produce, but not quite all. So there's, there's colors that will fall outside the range, but they're so small that we won't even be noticed. But here's the issue. Subtractive color works by taking two colors, subtracting out the main ones, and leaving behind the trace elements that are inherently, mm, I want to say, latent in the colors. The theory of, the, of their book is simple. You need two of each primary color. And each one has to go one way or the other. For example, Elysium Crimson is a red, but it's a red that pushes to the purple side. Cadmium Yellow is a yellow, but it pushes to the orange side. So Cadmium Red is a red that pushes to the red side. I mean, to the orange side, excuse me. So you should have two, red, two reds. Alizarin Crimson, which is pushes to the purple. And then, I don't know if you can see Cadmium Red. You can kind of see how much see how much oranger this is. It's kind of hard to see with the, with the computer monitor, but you kind of can tell. This is oranger than this is. This is much more purple. When you want a pure orange, See if I got enough yellow on here to, to make this work. No, I don't. Let me squeeze more out. Ah, got this tube. This is the older tube, so I was able to get this one open. While it's open, I'm gonna have to clean the tube. So I guess because I just spilled paint on me, which almost always happens, so. It's not like a big shock. My wife's going to come home and find paint all over me. She's going to say, oh, you've been painting. Because it's like, if there's a three-inch square, if there's a quarter-inch square canvas that's got wet paint on it, my finger will find it. Well, anyway, here's your cadmium yellow and the cadmium red. I'm going to take a, well, it's hue, by the way. This is not the cancerous kind. There's your yellow. There's your red. And I don't know if you can tell how much oranger this, yeah, you can, how much oranger this is than this. This isn't, this isn't a bad orange, but look how much brighter that little dab is here than that is. It actually looks better on the monitor. You can actually tell how much brighter this is. This is a much more vivid orange than this is. Now, this one isn't a complete failure, but here's the thing. I took a lizard and crimson, which is a purplish red, and the yellow, which is an orangish yellow, and made it. That's why it's not such a bad color. It's still a decent orange, but it's not a great orange. This is a much more fiery orange, and that's because I used an orangish red and an orangish yellow. So it made a pretty good color. 
really vibrant. Now, if I could open up the lemon yellow, you'd understand why the green wouldn't work. <laughs> um, the green doesn't work because I used ultramarine blue, which is a orangish, uh, sorry, ultramarine blue, which is a greenish, I mean a purplish blue, with cadmium yellow, which is a yellowish, I mean a, a, a orangish green, orangish green, wow, orangish yellow. So I took the worst possible yellow to make it, and the worst possible green, uh, sorry, worst possible yellow, worst possible blue, and try to make a color from it. So what I did was I took a yellow that was orangish and a green that was purplish and tried to make green out of it. I mean, I'm sorry, I keep saying green when I mean blue. But the problem is, is I'm taking colors that don't really have very strong capabilities of producing a green and try to make green. That's why it came up that muddy brown color. Um, if I get the lemon yellow open, I'd be able to show you a much brighter green. But it's not working for me. It stuck tight. I might have to buy a new tube. I might have to take days to work on this <laughs> slowly over time. Um, but that's to be expected. I hardly ever use this tube, and I haven't used any of my paints in ages. So it's my own fault. But I can show you um, a much better green by taking my phthalo blue, which is a greenish greenish blue, by the way. And this will produce a much better green than did the than did the French ultramarine. But see, that's why that purple rocked out pretty good, because I took a purplish blue, the ultramarine, and mixed it with the Elysian Crimson, which is a purplish red. So I unlocked the natural purple in both of those. So here's the here is a not so great yellow mixed with a better green, I mean better blue. See, and this is failing because the 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 cadmium is not a great yellow for this. It's still not a bad color. It's a nice muted green. But you can see it's not very bright. Now, if I get the lemon yellow open, mixing that with that, you'd have a green so bright you'd never have a use for it. <laughs> so um, that's the basic principle of it. You, you, if you had six colors, you could make almost any color in the rainbow. So you would need alizarin crimson, cadmium red or cadmium red hue, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, which I can't open up right now, phthalo blue, and ultramarine, or something like it. So you want a purplish red, an orangish red, an orangish yellow, a greenish yellow, a greenish blue, and a purplish blue. Those six colors plus black and white as tones, you can make almost anything. Now, if you want to make duller colors, you just pick one or two of the opposites of what you need. For example, if you want a duller purple, you would take the ultramarine again, but pick cadmium red. See? So there's your cadmium red. There's ultramarine blue. And you can see that's a much, much, much more muted purple. And if you want a really, really bad purple, you would take cadmium red and phthalo blue, which I will demonstrate now, too. I'll put it right here, by the way, guys. And the phthalo blue doesn't take that much to make it a really, really uh, bold. So phthalo blue is a high tinter, which means it takes very little of it to make the color work up. Now, you almost can't tell the difference. Maybe you can. Yeah, you can kind of see. This is a much more vibrant purple. Let me see if I can get it so you can see the colors without seeing the glare. So this is a much more vibrant purple, and these kind of are duller. Let me take a little bit of white and lighten them up, because right now with them being so dark, you can't really tell. And I went, whoops. How about knife went flying away? Oh, come on. Even the phthalo, even the even my whites give me some trouble. Hold on, folks. I threw my palette knife over across the world. Um, and I got paint all over me. <laughs> Great, just what I've always wanted. Paint all over me. No, I'm kidding. Cause I knew it would happen anyway. I just don't want paint on my pants. But um, 
that's what happens, you see. You, you, you need to balance out the colors with whatever, you know, whatever you're going to be doing with them. So, the th again, the theory is you just need six colors. Two of each of the prime, what we consider primary colors. And then you, you've got what you need. Um, for example, if you want a dull or purple, use, instead of using crimson or, and a ultramarine, you swap one of those out for either, you swap the red out for cadmium red, or you swap the blue out for, uh, th um, yeah, thalo blue. Although thalo blue makes a pretty good purple anyway. Because it's really a very, very cool green, greenish blue. Um, the reason I knew this theory worked was because one time I had taken a, a quinacridone red and phthalo green. Now, according to the theory, red and green are opposites. According to your color theory, you learned in art school, more than likely. When you mix red and green, you're supposed to get opposite colors. You're supposed to get, um, you're supposed to get phthalo, you're supposed to get a, a brown color. Yeah, when I mixed quinacridone red and phthalo green, guess what I got? You will never guess because I didn't even see it coming. I got purple, a very rich purple, very similar to that color there. Ne wait, wait up here, so my finger's not showing. That one right there. It looked almost exactly like that. Now, why would green and red make purple? It doesn't make any sense. Well, the reason it being is that the red pulled to the purple side and the green pulled to the blue. So when I mixed the two, I just inherently locked the cool colors already present in them and made myself a nice, obnoxiously purple purple, <laughs> which, again, wasn't my goal. My goal was to make a nice, dull, coolish brown, but that's not what happened. So basically, I had to um, figure that out. And like I said, this book, it's out of print. It's called Yellow and Blue Don't Make Green. And it goes into more detail than what I just talked about here. But I think that gives you the, the general idea of how it works. Um, and that is that, you know, it's it, you, you, it's more than just red and blue make green. The type of red, I'm sorry, the yellow and blue make green. The type of blue you use, the type of green, the type of yellow you use will affect how bright or how dull the green is. And those two factors alone will affect a lot of what you can do with your colors. So the brighter the color you want, the, the closer you get to the color you want as far as you know the, the secondary colors. Now, neutral tones, that's another thing entirely. But you know a lot of times you can get neutral tones from mixing two colors that are not the best match for each other. And you wouldn't even need to buy brown. I always buy brown anyway because it's just such a time saver. But you don't need to buy brown, really. You can probably get by without the brown. Oh, I know what I did. I'm going to need a pair of pliers, I think. I'm going to leave the broadcast running for a second. I'm going to run to the other room and keep talking. Um, but the, um, try, it's really difficult to use pliers sometimes because you risk breaking the material. Um, I'm going to try and do so carefully because again, I don't want to do a paint and it's going to stick in there. Um, my hand up quick while I get my but I might need to get new tubes of paint. Luckily, it's not too expensive. And I'm, I'm using student-grade stuff, um, which I probably shouldn't. But then again, I'm not selling to a gallery or anything. So uh, I know there's a lot of artists that give by my student-grade because they're not world-famous artists. And it's not going to pay over 100 years anyway. They're famous artists who are born to be famous women. So, unless someone's doing a work, doing your work for hire, probably not going to need to worry about this. See, look at this handyman tools. Let's see if I can get this open without crimping the tube permanently. It's on the widest setting. No, it is. Let's see if I can put it there. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> Did I? No, I thought I split the tube. Mm. Sound there good. <laughs> um, I might take a break just so I can open these tubes. I'm sure you don't want to sit here while I open these tubes. If I can't get them open, I won't do a painting demo. I can't believe it's already 1.30. Um, again, I'll work on these tubes. If I can't get them open in a reasonable amount of time, I'll do a painting demo another day. Um, I really was hoping to do it today, but then I didn't know these, these tubes were that far closed. I mean, if they're super far closed, I might just have to buy new tubes entirely. And I get paid this Friday. Um, this is my day off for the week, pretty much. Um, so it will be a while before I... Um, let me show you my face so you're not just seeing what I'm doing. It'll be a while before I come back on again, probably next Friday. Um, this is, like I said, this is my day off for the week. Um, I usually have one weekend day off, but I can't do videos on the weekends. Um, I'll probably do a live inking demo tonight because I can. Um, if I get this tube open, I'll probably do a live painting demo maybe. Uh, I was hoping to do the painting demo now. now I, I might do some of it if I can get the white open because I want to do this hand. Um, but the problem being, of course, I need to get the brush open before, I mean, I need to get the white open. If I can't get white open, I can't make anything else other than dark colors, and that won't be good for me. I need to have white to mix with. So we'll see. If I can get the if I can get the white open in a reasonable amount of time, we'll continue with this. But if I can't, then uh, we'll we'll have to make this another day, and I'll just keep working on this paint tube of paint. Um. But yeah, this Lucy Lou sketch is something I started a long time ago, and I, I just said I'm going to finish it finally. Because a lot of people, been, a lot of people, I've been, I, I, I'm a member of a couple art forums, and a couple people there, well, actually one person specifically, <laughs> was like, you know, hey, um, you know, how, do, you know, I love a demo about color mixing and stuff, and I was like, sure, I don't mind. I mean, I wanted to become a professor of art school. I just didn't want to do it in this economy, you know. There's no point in becoming a professor if it's going to be, you know, the department's going to be cut. With the economy like we have here in the United States this last couple of years, it's been really not easy to pursue a job in the arts. And I don't know, I've the market with another person who's, you know, even experienced people are having trouble finding jobs. And it's like, uh, I don't want to be another voice amongst the hundreds saying we need jobs for artists, you know. So I said I'm not going to even try. Not now, anyway. Maybe in the future I'll try. And for right now, I do the demos. And I don't even have a master's degree. I've just got a bachelor's degree in music composition, associate's degree in fine arts. So, I mean, I've got skill. I just don't really have the stuff to the full degrees to really make it worth my while. And that's the issue. But anyway, like I said, if I can't get this open... I'm going to try another five minutes or so. I don't want to bore you with my, the sound of my voice talking about nothing insignificant or important. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was going to make it a whole theory of everything kind of video, but I'm really not ready to do that yet. <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan of the golden mean, the golden ratio, which is a very, very fascinating idea. And I wanted to do that too, but it's just like, to do that would require a lot of setup and a lot of me talking boringly about things. And it's a very fascinating subject, though. But there, it's mostly numbers and thinking about things, so it's not very um, exciting. But I'll, I'll probably do like a, 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 I'll probably shoot a video and then put it on YouTube, and then link it to my my Twitter account. And I um, I haven't done anything on DeviantArt in so long. Like my I have a I have a group I'm a member of that I'm a member of. I'm, the, I'm a member. Yeah, I'm a member of the group I founded. Um, but I, I, I am a, I'm like the chairperson, the, the founding person of a group dedicated to the villains of Gotham, well, actually the villain women of Gotham, uh, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, and Catwoman. Um, and I have not been an administrator of that group in so long. Like, there's been requests of people saying, hey, I'd love you to join, add my stuff to your group, and I'm like, yeah. And I never responded. And it's not like I don't want to respond. It's just that my internet doesn't really like DeviantArt. It has a lot of scripting, which kind of goes against what my computer can do very easily. So if you put a request in that group and you're watching this video, do it again. I probably I turned you down for one or two reasons. One, it wasn't relating to the three women of Gotham 
or a spinoff character. Like, I will be leaning if it's Zatanna, because she, even though she's not a villain, villain she's a hero. Um, I will... Let me clean up my palette map. There's some traces of paint from months ago on there. Um, I will consider things like that, but if it's like a loose... If it's a DC character that has nothing to do with Gotham, like, except in the very loosest and vaguest sense, I'm going to turn you down. If it's extremely graphic imagery, I'm going to turn you down. Um, if it's not well drawn, you're still learning, I'm not going to turn it down. If it's humorous, oh wow, I got myself right in the face with that pink chip. <laughs> if it's humorous, I'm not going to turn it down. If it's not if it's not serious, if it's silly, still I can turn it down. What's going to get you turned down is not doing a relevant character, doing something graphic, or stealing something else's art. Um, I don't. I, I, I sketch from photographs as reference. Sometimes I do it on purpose as a tribute to whatever it was. But if you're outright stealing stuff, I'm not going to buy it in that either. Yeah, yeah, that's good on there. Um, I'm going to have to take a while to work on this. Um, if I can get this accomplished, I will either do a demo this week or next week, maybe Sunday. Uh, I'll do a painting demo. I hate that I set up all this Lucy Lou stuff and I'm not going to do actually any painting on it. So it's going to, I mean, I, I didn't drag all this stuff out of storage just to have it sit here and do nothing. I'm going to work on this painting. Even if I don't demo it on on, on the air, I'm still going to, I'm still going to go ahead and do it um, and post tribute, that tributes. Post uh, progress. There we go. Uh, on Twitter, uh, Facebook. I'm on, Facebook is uh, Jason Enos Art. On Twitter, I'm Enos the Composer because I made my, my my Twitter account when I was still in my art my music school. Um, so it's Enos the Composer, um, and then because I compose images and I compose music, and um, on Deviant Art, it's Bauer Power twenty four seven seven seven, and that's it really. Um, I'm just gonna like I said keep working on this too, but I don't need to be working on this live on the air. <laughs> um, and then if I get it open. In a reasonable amount of time, I'll be back with a demo. It's hot in here, the lights on too, and <laughs> and um, I'll do a demo. Of just be painting a little while, just show you how I work, and uh, hopefully I can get this tube open. <laughs> um, if so, I'll post links for the new video, um, the new working on the video. I got to clean my brushes really well too. I, I was going to do that on the air, but I really can't do it at the sink. Uh, what I use is brush soap. I've got a cake. I, I told you I, in my inking demos, I keep a separate cake for everything. This is my cake for my oil painting. It's a lot, little bit bigger, but you still use it for oil painting. And I should probably label them with masking tape and say oil paint. Not that it's a big deal, but I just don't like to mix chemicals, oil turpentine with acrylic, with watercolor, with other things. Watercolor brushes you can get do with probably regular soap. I mean, watercolor brushes are very forgiving. And if you you can get not, I mean, with oil painting usually it's best to have natural hairs. And then with watercolor it doesn't matter <laughs> as long as it holds water and it lets the water out of the brush, you're fine. But usually natural hair brushes are perfect for oil painting, and then uh, not, natural artificial is good for acrylic. I grew up with acrylic painting, that's how I uh, always only been oil painting for like ten years or so, maybe not even that. Let's see, two thousand one, about yeah, 10, 12, 13 years. Um, but I've been painting since I was like twelve, so it was like twenty years ago. So I've been painting for 20, about twenty years, and you know about 50, over half of that is oil painting, acrylic, and watercolor. I do all three, and um, and these theories we talked about, they're good for anything. Uh, I don't know if I said that, but these 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 work for anything. Even colored pencils work this way. Um, layering colored pencils will work the same with the same theories. You need a cool a cool red, a warm red, a cool yellow, a warm yellow, a cool red, I mean a cool blue and a, and a warm blue, and white and black, and you can make just about anything. Um, and the only reason I use different kind of paint paint is because they handle differently. Um, the oil the oil to pigment content, the tintability, those things are things you only learn after handling the paint for years. Uh, and I'll go over that when I do the painting demo. Um, for example, I could mix this color, yellow ochre. I could mix that color. It's just a kind of a muted brownish yellow. I can probably mix that, but the way this paint handles is so much different that I'd rather just use it from the tube because it handles differently than does the actual, um, than does it if I mixed it. Plus, that you get purer colors if you're using straight from the tube, which is both a mix bless. It's both a blessing and a curse. If you don't want it to look like it stands out, don't use it straight from the tube. If you want it to look like it's vibrant and popping out at you, 
um, use it straight from the tube. It, it almost looks flat when you use it straight from the tube. So I almost always never use a, a paint color straight from a tube. I was always oh, I'd, even a touch or something else. Oh, it's a bright red. Oh, I'll use cadmium red and touch of lizard. So you're not going to notice the touch of a lizard, but it mutes it down so it doesn't look artificial. Um, of course, if you want that vibrant pop stand out at you, use it straight from the tube. But even if the color matches exactly, I'm going to add white, a little bit of black, something to it so it's not, so it all blends together, so it's not vibrant and screaming at you that it's straight from the tube colors. Plus, a lot of these colors are transparent or semi-transparent in their natural state because of the oil content and how the pigments behave. So you sometimes have to add a little bit of white just so that uh, the color underneath that doesn't show through. Um, excuse me. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can clean these tubes of paint, uh, get them opened up. If so, uh, painting demo tonight or inking demo tonight. I'll probably ink tonight. I'll do the vampire carnivorous rabbit. Uh, but anyway, if so, like I said, I will update you with more painting demos. So hopefully the, 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 color, the uh, color mixing demo made sense. If it didn't, drop me a line. You know how to reach me. If you don't know how to reach me, Google Plus me. I mean, I'm on Google Plus. You know that. You can see that. I have new my YouTube account is youtube.com slash newfreshreview. If you don't have the ability to have a Google account, then you can hit me on Twitter. And if you don't have Twitter, you have Facebook. If you don't have Facebook or Twitter or Google, you're... I don't know how you, why you're seeing me. <laughs> I'm not trying to mean. I'm just saying that mo most everybody either has a Twitter, a Facebook, or a Google account where they can drop me a line. Um, and even I think I've got uh, yeah I've got Tumblr too. I think it's JCNOS Art or JCNOS Comic Art. I've got a Tumblr, and I don't think you need to be a registered user of Tumblr to leave a message. I think you can leave one anonymously. So I'd rather know who you are, so I know how to respond. Because sometimes the respond I tailor the responses based on where you're coming from. I mean, if you're an artist, I'm not going to sit there and explain. Oh, this is what you want to do. You know. If you're a new artist, there might be some things you know and some things you don't, and I don't want to cover the stuff you might already know. And if you're a veteran of artists and you just say, hey, you know, what's with this? I can tell you and not have to worry about it. If I use a, a term, I might have to worry about, uh, you know, so if you, if you could, you know, if you, if you leave me a very vague question, sometimes you might get a very vague answer because I don't know where you're coming from with it. Sometimes I'm pretty dense. <laughs> so if you have a question about the day, something didn't make sense, I can cover it because... Uh, I kind of did, I, I breezed through some of it, and, I, and I, if I had my lemon yellow open, you'd see a bright green, but you get the idea. I mean, lemon yellow and phthalo green, phthalo blue will give you the, one of the richest, I mean, br so bright of a green, it's almost neon, especially if you use more of the lemon yellow. So, you know, those are your colors. You get those six, and I think you'd be good for a while. And then if you want me to add black. Black is kind of a cheat, though. In black dulls, it doesn't really make a rich neutral. So you want dull, add black. If you, want new, if you want more muted, use one of the other colors. Um, it's kind of the basic gist. And like I said, if this didn't a answer a lot of questions, if this brought up more questions than it answered, answer the, ask those questions. I will be answering them. Uh, but anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, I know uh, if you're watching me live, thank you. If you're not watching me live, you're watching this after the fact. Like I know someone's going to be doing. Thank you so much for watching. And like I said, just leave me feedback so I know if, if you caught it, if something didn't make sense. Um, and good talking with you, and um, hopefully I'll be doing a video later tonight and, and more videos soon.